This is a quick check-in with you about Portrait Artist of the Year. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel because we have a lot more episodes to come. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach and lately recapper, recapper of Portrait Artist of the Year. I'm really enjoying the recaps and we're just finishing season seven, which would be 2020. And so there are two more seasons that I have access to, which is season eight and season nine. I do not have access to 10 and I think they're currently working on 11. I'm not sure about that, but I'm gonna see what I can do about that. But the reason that I wanted to talk with you, and I just wanted to talk to you, not script something, is that um, some of the picks, some of the judges' picks are becoming, well, they have been all the way through, just not my taste. And I'm not gonna show any examples of that because I don't wanna single anybody out. And also because I know art is completely subjective and everybody likes different things. And that's great. I think that's just great. The thing I think I'm asking and wondering about that you might comment about below to help me out is how do you as a viewer feel about this? I realized that I, I don't watch sports generally, you know, basketball, football, those kinds of things. And yet I'm married to someone who does. And I just haven't understand, understood at all why it matters, why one team wins and one team doesn't. I just it's kind of like Zoom, don't understand it. And now I realize that for me, Portrait Artist of the Year, Landscape Artist of the Year, they're, they're basically my Super Bowl. They are my sport. And so suddenly I have allegiances as I'm watching the program and I'm rooting for certain people or I want certain things to happen. And when they don't happen, I, it feels to me like, oh, that was a bad call by the ref. You know, let's, let's do it again. But of course, there's nothing quantitative like that that you can say, you know, there was a foul or there was something done wrong and so there should be a penalty. It's completely subjective. And so I'm wondering why I feel so emotionally invested in it. So uh, recently, uh, the winner of one of these programs, I won't say which one, was really a surprise to me and, and I, just, I just don't understand it at all. And I, I, I don't wanna say that in the recap because um, because that's not right, you know, I want to keep things positive. So I asked Hannah Broadhead, who I've interviewed on this program before, and she participated, I believe, in the 2023 series. And I asked her, because she lives in the UK and is sort of in that loop, uh, were people as shocked as I was by the winner of that episode? And she said no, and she said uh, they weren't, and that she had actually seen the work in person and she said it was much more effective in person than it translated over television and so i appreciated that and then she did give me a bit of a spoiler and mentioned that uh, in one of the seasons coming up that one of those winners is quite controversial and i just usually i don't like to look ahead because i like to be surprised and find out at the same time you do who wins the program but i did peek ahead i did i couldn't stop myself and and I'm gonna go ahead and say it's a really, really fine painting. The final commission is a very, very fine painting, but the coloring and the palette chosen for that painting is just uh, un uh, inexplicable to me. And I guess it was inexplicable to a lot of people since she shared that that was controversial. And I know the program is an ent entertainment and it should be an entertainment. And I know I be would be incredibly bored if every single time a winner was picked, you know, we just saw the same, the same, the same, the same. But I was talking with somebody and I said, you know, I watched the Great British Baking Program and those judges I know are all bakers. So that helps, you know, one of the issues in this program is that only one of the judges is an art artist, meaning only one of these judges has actually spent some time on canvas. And um, so, and the other thing that we don't know as viewers when we're watching a baking program is what does the thing taste like? Because uh, as Paul Hollywood will mention on that program, he doesn't like style over substance. He doesn't want to see something beautiful, but that doesn't taste great. And I think what we're looking, we, we don't have a taste issue here. I mean, in terms of eating, we have a taste issue in terms of, you know, is it in good taste or bad taste? But that, you know, taste is, is, is a word that's used differently in different contexts. And so I thought, 
I can't think of a more subjective program or, or criterion than art, really. And so I thought, okay, I gotta let it go. Because if you're gonna enter this arena, you already know that's the case. And I thought it's kind of similar to, um, I used to watch quite a bit of figure skating back, back, back before we had more choices of things to watch. Now there are more interesting things to watch, but, but I used to watch um, competitive figure skating. And even though that has a numerical system for both technical ability as well as artistic ability, it still was subjective depending on how the judges might determine that. And we did find out later that there was some politi politics involved in some of it as well, which was uh, not, not correct. But uh, so, I'm, I, you know, I think that if you're gonna enter a, a competition, and I'm saying for my own self as a recapper, if I'm gonna enter the competition as a recapper, I have got to accept the things aren't always going to go my way, and and that is just something that I have to accept. So I shall do so. But I wondered how you feel sometimes in watching the program. If you feel sort of as emotionally invested as I do, and I think the only reason I'm emotionally invested in it is because it's art, and art and painting is something that I care about a lot, and I maybe didn't realize quite how much. I mean, I. No, I felt that way about my art personally, but I didn't realize how much I felt about that for everybody else as well. So that's just a little bit of a rant and a check-in as we've been with you all just to say howdy doody. And um, remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color. I'm gonna have some interviews coming up that I'm excited about. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.